What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the underbody roughness aerodynamics of a car. We'll be going through what is underbody roughness, the effect that it has on drag, and the effects that it has on lifts. And this is actually a very interesting topic. It's far more in depth and complicated than you might first think. And this actually comes off the heels off of one of our podcasts, podcast 132, where we go through this also in depth in a particular case. So if you want to listen to that as well, you'll learn a bit more about underbody roughness and the effects it has on aerodynamic drag and lift as well. So first of all, what is underbody roughness for a car? Well, I'm sure you've probably seen underneath the car. So let's say we have the front of a car here, and then we have the windshield, and then we have the wheel housing, and then the rest of the car. And underneath, if you were to look, there are two main types of underbodies that you can have that are, one is becoming more common than the other. Historically, you have an exposed underbody. So the uh, exhaust system, so you have the muffler and all that is down here, maybe the fuel tank around here or wherever. You might have some drivetrain um, set up that is exposed to the air. All of these components, plus more, are exposed to the air, just generally speaking. The other thing that uh, we can do with the underbody is to put these covers on there. And this is becoming far more popular these days. So what we do is we cover everything up. We just put these plastic plates and we put them underneath and they are completely smooth and flat. So these are the two different types. Let's call this number one, and this is number two. This is historical, and this is coming into popularity now. The reason why we do this second way particularly is that it reduces drag, but we'll get into that more now. So if we have the flow coming upstream and it's hitting the car, these two underbodies will behave significantly differently. They'll affect the flow quite in a quite different way. So this flow to begin with will come underneath, and as you'd expect, we have some flow coming underneath and then it's gonna be hitting all of this junk underneath. And you're gonna be getting you know, some vortices occurring, some flow separation perhaps, and then hopefully we'll get it reattached before the end and it'll come back up and produce a fairly nice wake. Whether that happens or not, that's anyone's guess. This second situation, again, okay, the flow will hit the front and some flow will go over the top, other flow will come underneath. And then hopefully we'll get obviously some uh, flow separation around here at the front. If we design a car well, we can reduce that and we'll keep the flow attached the entire way. And then when we get to the back, it th will then hit the diffuser and it will create a quite nice wake. Those are the two different general aerodynamic phenomena that occur. Now with this first case, with the flow coming in and hitting all this like exposed stuff, that's obviously gonna create a lot of drag because not only are we getting a lot of these uh, objects having a lot of high pressure at the front, low pressure at the back, because you have, let's say we have the fuel tank, which we will isolate it here. You have air coming here. You have very high pressure here. Pressure goes up, flow comes underneath, and then you get this wake behind it. So the pressure is gonna drop here. So you have high pressure up front, uh, low pressure downstream. Delta P is very high. So we're gonna get a net resistive force backwards. That's drag. The same kind of thing happens with all of these other systems. Not only that happens, but the entire car will now also experience a increase in drag as well. The main reason why is because of this diffuser section that I mentioned. So we haven't gone through the diffuser yet, but I'll just briefly touch upon what the diffuser does. So the main function of the diffuser is to keep the flow attached and angle it up at an angle to reduce the wake. The more we can do that, the lower the drag will typically be. Now, if we have the flow coming along the underbody and then it hits all this stuff and then re uh, separates and then goes in all different directions, the chances of it reattaching on the diffuser and then flowing as it should are very low. So that means that we are probably gonna have a much bigger wake back here than for this car where the flow comes underneath, stays attached quite nicely. By the time it gets to the diffuser, it's already attached. So we don't have to worry about that too much. So the diffuser will act as we would like it and the flow will come up and we'll get it still a wake, but it won't be nearly as big as this one. So the drag coefficient will naturally drop on this second car as well. So there are two main contributors to this drag change. What about the lift? So the lift is actually much more complicated than you might think. We'll cover it in two different stages. The first comes into the underbody roughness in general. So let's think about what the, this means for this underbody roughness. If you have all these exposed surfaces, you're gonna be getting a lot higher pressure on certain surfaces. So let's say this pressure here on this uh, fuel tank, it's higher at the um, front leading edge here. But then underneath, you might also get a bit of a high pressure underneath as well before it finally reduces a little bit uh, downstream. And generally speaking, what happens with all these ex exposed parts is that the pressure underneath the car generally increases. 
and we cover again more of this in podcast 132. But anyway, we can just assume that the pressure generally increases for this exposed underbody. So if we have higher pressure underneath, then that's going to result in the lift increasing. With the covered underbody, we don't really get that increase in pressure underneath because we don't have all this exposed stuff arresting the flow and decelerating it and making the pressure go high. So the pressure stays approximately constant. Let's say constant here. Now, that's not the only way that this rough underbody affects the lift. Let's think about, again, the rough underbody, what it does to the flow. I mentioned it arrests it a little bit. It creates some resistance to the flow. It reduces the energy of it. What does that do? Well, let's say we have the ground right here and we have this back pressure. So pressure is acting back on this, um, in this region. So the flow to come underneath has to overcome this pressure to begin with. What that does is that it means that some of the flow will not actually go underneath the car. So if we have, let's say, I don't know, a mass flow rate underneath this car of, I don't know, let's say one um, meter cubed per second. Under this car, it might be 0 0.8 meters cubed per second. No, sorry, that's the flow rate, not the mass flow rate, just the regular flow rate. So if that happens, it means that more flow will have to go around the car elsewhere. So it will have to go over the top, for example, and around the sides. So if there's more flow going over the top, it means that more flow has to overcome this top part here, it has to flow faster because we're cramming the same amount of flow in this general area to come over the car. If the velocity increases, the pressure reduces, and this comes from um, continuity, which we've also covered in one of our aero fundamentals videos. So if pressure drops on top and pressure increases underneath, we get a two-way change in pressure, which means that the lift will increase a lot more. So this rough underbody can increase the lift in two different ways. So as I mentioned, the effects that the rough underbody has on the lift is significantly complicated, more complicated than what we might think. And this also depends on the height that this car is from the ground. If we reduce this height, effectively more of the uh, cross-sectional area of this underbody bar part is being taken up by this wake, which is unclean flow, it's slow moving flow, which provides a lot more back pressure because you have all this air in the way, which is not flowing out of the way quickly. If we increase the height, effectively less of the cross-sectional area, percentage-wise, is being taken up by this wake and this um, choppy flow. So that means that more flow can come underneath and we won't get this um, increase, as much of an increased flow rate on top, which means we won't increase the velocity as much, which means that the pressure won't drop as much. So the lift won't uh, increase as much. So that's how the height of the car above the ground or uh, the closest to it affects the lift as well. So that's the underbody roughness and how it affects a car's aerodynamics. Let's quickly go through it again, just to recap everything. So the underbody of the car can either be rough or smooth. The reason why it would be rough is that we don't put these smooth panels underneath to like close off all the underbody stuff. So the fuel tank, the drivetrain, the muffler, etc. And that was a very typical way of doing it back even 10 years ago. However, now it is becoming more and more common for these underbody plates to be put on there. And obviously like 20, 30 years ago, the leading car manufacturers were doing this already, but it's only really become standard, I would say, in the last five, 10 years, perhaps, for the, for the cheaper car manufacturers, at least. And so this rough underbody can increase the drag because you have all this junk in the way now, and the flow is hitting it, it's increasing the pressure on the leading edge side and on the, um, sorry, on the upstream side, on the downstream side, the pressure is dropping, and that means that we get a change in pressure and that results in a resistive force. Also, the diffuser can't act the way that we really want it to, which means that we get a bigger wake and that increases the drag as well. In terms of the lift, all this underbody stuff creates a back pressure to begin with, so that means that less flow can really come underneath the car, which means more flow has to go over the top or around the sides. More flow over the top means that the velocity has to increase for this flow to get around quickly enough for the rest of the flow to keep coming along. That means that the pressure drops, that means we get an increase in lift. We also have pressure increasing often on the underbody surfaces because all these structures have this air hitting it and that means that the um, stagnation pressures, like the stagnation points occur on this um, underbody surface. The pressure increases underneath, which means that the lift increases as well. For the smooth underbody, we don't really get this as much, especially if we have a fairly high uh, ride height. The higher the ride height on this um, rough underbody, the less effect we have on this back pressure occurring, but we still do have 
air coming and hitting this, um, like all the different stuff underneath the car and increasing the pressure there. We just don't have the increase in the velocity on top and the drop in pressure there. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, check out our playlist on it and our Air Fundamentals uh, playlist and also our podcast 132 on this. And also click subscribe so you can see more videos like this. And if you want to read more into this and other topics on automotive aerodynamics, check out a book by Joseph Katz called uh, Automotive Aerodynamics. I really like it. It's linked in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.